Chapter 2 New Orleans, Spring, Tuesday, 4.45 p.m. I found the note when I woke up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I know, I know, it's the afternoon. But I slept in. I do that sometimes. Don't be a fuck about it. I'm at my desk in Monroe Hall overlooking the university quad. Outside, the campus is green and bright, full of cypress trees. It's a warm spring day. I look at the trees closely and I can't be sure. The movement is difficult to see from this far away. It probably isn't them. Not this time, probably. Valentine and Mr. Conrad weren't around. I found the folded sheet of paper tucked underneath my door. She must have left it for me sometime earlier in the morning. Like the bitch had some right to come to my door after I went to sleep. She just slid it underneath like it didn't matter. Which, of course, is the problem, really. That it didn't matter. Not to her. I didn't matter. Not to that fucking bitch. Not anymore. Probably not ever, now that I think about it. See, but I do matter. She should know that. I'll make her see that. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I do that sometimes. Just stay with me. It's not that hard. Don't be a fuck about it. My next class is the History and Systems of Psychology. It starts in 20 minutes. I won't be attending. Not today. Today is special day. That fucking bitch made it a special day. Yes, she did. I read the note again. My dear John letter, if you will. That's just a figure of speech, you know. Because my name is not John. My name is Albert. Not even close to John. Anyway, I finish reading it and I start over again. It's short. 100 words exactly. I treated you bad. Well, at least you got that part correct. But the goddamn hubris of her to write this. I read it once more and then I go away. I disappear for a bit. When I come back, the note is all ripped up. Just scattered bits of paper on my desk, which, if I'm being honest with you, is a surprise. My desk looks like a goddamn mess of confetti, like someone had a parade. But there isn't a parade today, and I don't remember how it got ripped up. That happens sometimes. The paper bits litter my otherwise spectacularly clean desk. I say that with emphasis, just for you. You should know this about me. I like to keep things clean and in order. The world is fucked up enough, so this really is the least I can do. Take a fucking minute or two and, and do things the way they are supposed to be done. It's not so hard with the right dedication, the right sense of purpose. It's right there in the Book of Albert. Chapter 1, verse 2. Preparation, after all, is the first commandment. Too bad most people don't take the time anymore. America ain't so great again after all, is it? Amid the ripped paper, a single word is visible. Not completely torn like the rest of the mess. Just one word and it looks up at me. The word is... Right. She made it all lowercase. But I said it with all caps here. Again, for emphasis. Just for you. So you know it's important. I want you to see what a goddamn fucking whore writes like. I want you to understand what happens next. How she lit a fuse. How she primed my pump. Right? Right? My fingers find some solace as I reach for the hardwood stick I keep next to my desk. I set it across my lap. It's slightly thinner than a broom handle, but just as long. I find the wood soothing as my fingers tighten around it. I've had it for a long time. We've seen some action together, the stick and me. Mr. Conrad had gotten a smack or two over the years, that beady-eyed motherfucker. Valentine, not so much. That cunt gives me the willies. Anyway, as I was saying, there's loyalty between the stick and me, like Excalibur for Lancelot, Santiago to the old man. It's a deeper commitment, spanning decades. Unlike how long that bitch Olivia lasted. I had her for two months. I had my stick for much longer than that. And listen, you have to know her name. That's why I said it. I won't say it again. I won't give her the satisfaction. I have a new sound for her name now. I prefer bitch and fucking whore. But that can get confusing. So here you are. My narrative device for you. I told you her given name. I just said it. I won't say it again. I'm trying not to be a fuck about it. I just thought you should know. Let's move on. 
I sweep the torn paper into the trash can and make a mental note to empty it later. I don't like a mess, even in the trash can. There's a pile of books organized by ascending size stacked neatly at the corner of my desk. That's how I like to do it. It's ordered that way and soothes me some. A flyer for Pirate Alley Ghost Tours sits tucked between the books and lamp. I allow it to be there because it has significance, an exception to the rule, if you will. On the top of the book pile is my favorite book. It's small, with red and black cover, and is face down. I can see Mr. Sinclair's face staring back at me from the back material. I rest the stick on my lap and pick up the book. I like the way it feels in my hands. Firm and soothing. Reassuring whispers. Words like, bestseller, and New York Times list 10 weeks running are on the front cover. If I'm being honest with you, I'm still mad at myself for reading it so fast the first time. Just took the whole thing in one big gulp. I didn't know. I should have savored it, relished it. But I just took it all at once, skipping Professor Carter's introduction to sociology to read it. No big loss, though. Not like I missed a class. I say this out loud in my empty room. Well, I wouldn't say I was missing it, Bob. That's from the movie I like. I'm telling you this because sometimes I get thinking so fast, I lose people that I'm engaged with. And I'm engaged with you, aren't I? It's important for an author to engage their reader. I don't want to lose people, so I slow down. This allows them to keep up. They say some fish never stop swimming. Just always moving through the water. My mind is like that. Always moving and never at rest. Listen, don't be a fuck about it. It's just the way I am. Sinclair's book is an inspiration to me. More than that, really. It's my goddamn Mecca. My own personal Jesus. I'm not sure why it took me so long to find my path, to see my compass swing true north. But when I read that book, I knew. It gave me a sense of purpose. All my suffering suddenly had meaning. Things came into focus. Like it says in chapter 5, verse 13, Travel in my footsteps on the beach. I shall carry you, and you will never be forsaken. Reading Sinclair's book was like reading the note the bitch slid all sneaky snaky under my door. I went away for a little bit and came back with this spark of inspiration. I had the most fascinating idea. The book helped me assemble the bomb. That bitch lit the fuse. I set the book back, face down, on the pile where it goes. I'm laughing now. I feel like that this is important for you to know right now. It's an unsettling little chuckle. It's because I'm thinking about the movie again. No, I wouldn't miss attending class today, no sir. How much could I miss it, really? You should understand that as well. Everything at this school was dumbed down for the good old boy network. Fraternity keggers and playing football gives those special few a green wave of privilege into cushy jobs around Louisiana. I'll be fine catching up. Probably could teach a class if I needed to. I pick up the stick again and tap it on the floor and think about that bitch. I can't believe that goddamn snatch thinks she can just end it with me. Tap. 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 She just thinks it's as easy as breaking up through a ridiculous Dear John letter. I'm Albert, bitch. Tap. 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 She knows that. I find this entire day unsettling. Though it's unsettling in this kind of apocalypse meets the rapture way. I'm not sure if you can understand, but that's how I'm feeling. Like I'm shedding something and there is this bright, white, hot piece underneath it all. Like burning bush shit. Swallowed by a whale. I'm on a journey and I'm sliding down the chute pretty damn fast. I put the stick down and place both hands across the smooth, clean desk. It's been built for sturdiness and longevity. I can feel my thoughts moving in the water, sleek and legion. They do that sometimes. When it happens, the smoothness of the wood calms me down some. All part of the larger plan. And with this bitch, it's not like I hadn't expected it. She was recruited like the others. Sly bitch. Black goth hair. Sly bitch with saggy tits already at 19. Who has saggy tits at 19? The first time she took off her bra, they just sagged down. And that's what my erection did as well. 
I'll tell you that. And you should know this as well. She was a drunk. A fucking drunk. And really, that's part of the problem, isn't it? Just a total lack of goddamn dedication to anything. A lack of intentionality. Except writing that note. That was the one thing she apparently had no fucking compunctions about. Setting pen to paper for my little fucking treat. Slipping it under my door like some kind of sneaky snatch snake. I smile. I like that alliteration. Sneaky snatch snake. That was her to a goddamn T. Eve, munching on that apple, started the whole machine in motion. Did you know it wasn't an apple? It doesn't say that anywhere. People are these fucking retarded lemmings, just following the herd. Could have been a tomato or fucking banana. But apple is our collective delusion. Another example of a collective shit people swallow and then ask for more with a stupid grin on their faces? Mindless sheep. The whole lot of them. Mindless fucking sheep. I'm getting worked up. I can feel my needle going into the red. I need to keep my cool. I pick up my stick. It's calming as I touch it. Bells ring outside from the tower on the quad. I trace the number 19 on my desk with my finger. You won't understand that, so I won't even try to explain it to you. It's about the bells in the tower. But what I'm about now is Miss Saggy Tits, Miss Sneaky Snatch Snake. And listen, I don't want you to get this wrong. I'm not some worthless pile of shit feeling sorry for myself. There is no doubt I'm better off without this bitch pulling me down to her level of feminine foolishness and folly. She was never worth my time. She meant nothing to me, means nothing, drunk fucking whore. Yet, yet, there's a balance that has been unsettled, and this will not do. There needs to be a reckoning to set things right. I wonder how much she knows about them. If Valentine and Mr. Conrad told her to tempt me and tease me, to draw me to the bait and then yank. It's how they work, waiting until I needed her the most, until that point when I finally considered feeling something for that bitch. That's when Valentine's hook was set, piercing me. This is exactly the kind of bullshit the sneaky snatch snake would engage in with me. Goddamn puppet for the sharks. But the joke is on her, right? Because I always held a little back, a little in reserve. Best to keep it that way. Best to always keep a little in the reserve tank. Slip that damn hook. So, history lesson time. I don't think you will understand all of this, but I'm going to try to give you some context. Don't be like all those fucking millennial masses out there who can't focus for one single goddamn minute. This helps build the arc. Helps you understand some. Don't be a fuck about it and just keep listening. 